A few weeks ago, I spent a week in Utah doing a few collaborations and had an opportunity to collect a resource I've been wanting to get for some time. All it took was a mere 14 mile hike up a mountain just to collect a very precious orange dirt. But this dirt was an important historical key to unlocking the industrial age as this dirt can be turned into metal. So let's see if I'm able to collect some of this soil, take it home, and turn it into steel. In my quest to make everything from scratch, metals have always been a challenge. Most abundant sources have been fully tapped or are currently owned and restricted from accessing. So for most sources, I've been limited to mostly low grade options like leftover tailings, being given a small sample from a now closed mine, low grade ore that wasn't mined, to even scavenging the concentrated ore pellets that had fallen off of trains. So a natural high grade source of iron ore has always been of interest to me, Bog ore is a type of iron ore that forms by natural biological processes that happen in bogs, allowing concentrated chunks of iron oxide to form in the right conditions. Historically, humans have been using this as a source of iron for smelting since pre-Roman times, and most iron from the Viking era was made from bog ore. Bog ore can potentially form in any bog, but it requires the right combination of a few factors to occur, so tracking down one in the wild could be a bit of a challenge. Fortunately, the YouTube channel Good and Basic were able to locate one in Utah and offered to take me back to it. Be sure to check out their original video where they first discovered it. But first, today's video is possible thanks to today's sponsor, Upstart. Your debt can be exhausting and hold you back from many things in life. High interest loans are especially painful as you can just watch your debt go up every month with no escape in sight. Today's sponsor, Upstart, might be a good option to consider to help escape these challenges. They have helped over 1.8 million customers to get on a path to financial freedom. The process is entirely online with simple and easy to understand payment terms, making it a breeze to set up. You can check your rate in minutes for loans between 1,000 and 50,000 without impacting your credit score. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest loans, or funding personal expenses, Upstart can help you get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Rather than only looking at your credit score alone, their model considers other factors like your income and employment that can help you find a smarter rate for your loan. Check your rate today at upstart.com slash everything. That's upstart.com slash everything to check your rate today. Don't forget to use our URL and let them know we sent you. All it should have been was a drive up the mountains and then a short hike to the location but things then ran into a little bit of an issue. We're on our way to get some bog ore and we ran into a little bit of a problem as the road is closed still. Uh, I assume for winter, a little early in the season, I guess. Uh, so we're on our own to uh, go by foot. This is about seven or eight miles. So this will probably take uh, a good part of the day, but hopefully we can still succeed and get our iron. Trail moment in the forge. It's been about uh three hours, about a half mile from the actual location. Just gotta trudge through the snow. Sure about snowshoes. I almost there. Whew. All right, so it took about four hours. Made it up the trail, uh, hiking on foot. Very exhausting, it was a little over seven miles. Very treacherous towards the end, lots of snow. Got pretty deep at some points and lots of uh, kind of roulette of what, when you're just gonna fall in up to your waist. Don't you would have been nice. Didn't expect that. <laughs> Not quite the trip I was expecting for this. Uh, but we made it to the bog, but now unfortunately it's covered in snow. It's gonna be a little bit hard to find the actual uh, bog ore because it's can't really look for the red soil when it's covered in snow. So hopefully we get lucky. Hopefully uh, Joseph's memory of where it was at before works out and we can uh, track down some and uh, get out of here before it gets dark and cold and miserable. Let's uh, start digging and hopefully find something. Found it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Huh. Check it out, man. That oh, was a little bit easier than I expected. <laughs> I do like it when things work. <laughs> Doesn't that look like a pile of rust? Yeah. That's rust. This is an organic form of iron ore. 
because it's high grade, which means it's easy to smelt with primitive means. So no wonder this was the stuff that fueled the Iron Age. You know, it's not gold, but every single time we find ore like this, I, I can't help but feel like, we've struck it rich, you know? <laughs> Now. Oh, it would not be good. <laughs> right now it's making lumps, and I suspect that's because it's frozen. It's a bag of rust. <laughs> but it's fancy rust. It's organic. No, really, it's, it's organic iron ore. This is easy to find, high grade stuff. So if you're gonna do it primitive, bog ore is the way to go. This place is amazing. Okay, now that bag goes in another bag. It might sound a little bit random to be looking for iron ore in a bog, but the way it works is actually extremely cool. There are certain types of bacteria that can actually consume dissolved iron, oxidize it into iron oxide, and there's a little bit of energy stored in the iron when they do that, which means they're actually eating metal. They eat dissolved metal, they turn it into rust, but as soon as it's been eaten and turned into iron oxide, it precipitates out of solution and it won't dissolve anymore. This stuff builds up. You get water trickling into a bog, you get acidic conditions, which are just right for this type of bacteria, and then you get the iron building up. And a second iron bacteria finds this iron oxide toxic. And so they will aggregate it together into lumps, kind of like coral. So if you run around an old Irish bog and stab into the dirt, if you feel a lump, it's very likely to be iron ore. Look how staining that is. Snow cone? Uh, this one's steak and kidney pie. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. Yeah. Golden. Thank you, Bogor. It's been a lovely trip. Then just the same seven mile hike back to the car, this time carrying the heavy load of ore. Meanwhile, while I was out gathering ore in Utah, Joe, one of the blacksmith and brewmasters we've collaborated with in a few videos, was preparing to do a smelt and was busy building everything he needed for that with some of his friends. We are going to be building the smelter stack today. It is bricks and clay, which provides a stable base for the rest of the smelter stack to sit on top of. As we're making it, we want to knead it and then form it into about softball size balls. I've always wondered about life as a dung beetle, and I'm, I'm starting you're, to feel it. You're, li you're living your dung beetle life. I, I mean, like it. All right, we're just going to start layering clay up against our form. We have uh, about half of our smelter constructed. It's now wrapped up to make sure all of our clay stays nice and wet so we can continue building up tomorrow. This is the end of day one. So now we are forming a clay tweer which will be the um, air inlet for the smelter. This should hopefully be a more durable internal structure inside of the smelter that'll survive the entire smelt and keep the um, hot spot in the smelter right in the center where we want it in that reducing atmosphere. It's looking like all the ones I've seen on the internet. <laughs> Nothing non-phallic about it. <laughs> We are going to drill the hole in the side of the furnace that we'll be mounting our tweer in that provides airflow into the charcoal burning inside. We're gonna drill it sort of at a 20-ish degree angle. We want the tweer to kind of create a hot spot in the center of the furnace, but not be too steep. Otherwise it can actually interfere with bloomery formation and potentially even split the bloom in half.
we have the smelter, this uh, bloomery furnace ready to go. The tweer is installed, the door has been tweaked, and everything's ready. So now we are just going to light a nice gentle fire inside of it to kind of cure up the rest of the clay in the internal shaft, solidify the tweer, and then tomorrow morning we're ready to light it up to actually start uh, putting ore charges in. Back from Utah, after a really grueling hike in the mountains, I was able to get a decent supply of bog ore. A lot of Vikings used for smelting iron. And I'm here with Joe, who has been working on recreating a Viking-style bloomery. Here you go. Yeah, thank you very much. So we'll roast this up and use this as some of our charges today. We'll burn off the water, and we should see a bit of a color change as the oxides present themselves as much more red after it's roasted. I built a sort of Viking Age short stack bloomery furnace that should take about six hours total and hopefully at the end of it we'll pull a nice lump of iron. We do everything right and we're lucky. I'm creating a like four inch high layer of charcoal fines or charcoal powder below the tweer and this will give kind of a nice pre-filled area for the bloom to start consolidating on and forming that nice uh, liquid bed of slag. And once it's got a nice solid heat going we'll start adding um, two kilogram charges of ore and charcoal at a time. Hopefully six hours later, we'll be able to pull out a consolidated bloom chunk that will then uh, forge into something. And how much ore are you planning to put in and, and how much do you expect to get out? Today, I think we're gonna charge about 55 pounds of ore total, but if we pull 15, I'll be very happy. We might need to take a little out, which is where we wanna be. So much ash. I can't even see down there now. If we can all gather around, please, to a productive, efficient, Smooth running smelt. We shall offer some sage for the friend's wedding. Some very nice island scotch. And a sampling of the Avalor that we used last time. And more scotch. <laughs> the Wendy's bag really sells it in there. <laughs> the clanking method. Yeah. You're offering up arm hair. If I have arm hair at the end of this, I've done something wrong. Imagine doing this all day. That's what apprentices are for. Can you imagine? This is how you have to make every bit of iron and steel. You yes. guess. As much as I'm a fan of it, I'm not a fan. There we go. Uh, I want a dragon, please. Come on. I know you're sticky, but get out. Oh, oh my gosh. There we go. There you go. Good color. I'll How's check the taste? <laughs> By all means, make it <laughs> There we go. That's what we want. Don't <laughs> flow pretty, pretty slowly. Now it's flowing. Yeah, a little bit. That's probably a little too much. That was a successful slank down. Oh, this is now an ongoing problem. Open this back up and try to get a little bit more slag out. We're getting a little full inside. There we go. So right now we're seeing nice like liquid silica. I'm looking to not, I don't see any sparks, which is good. It means there's not a lot of iron coming out in it. In fact, uh, now we are going to call that done for a little bit. The hot spot is where we want it to be this time. This is a much yeah. better slag composition. That's really yeah. good. Again, we learned a couple things. So that was our uh, third successful slag tap. As the slag builds up in the furnace, it'll start to block the airflow from the tweer. So we're essentially removing it to provide more room for more slag to fill it. The slag is mostly silica, other um, elements from the smelter stack itself, as well as there should be a small amount of iron in there, which is actually a good thing. It means we're reducing it properly. So in there, there should be like little beads of iron. And eventually, we can actually run this back through the furnace and re-extract that reduced iron. This is our final charge. This will be our 34th kilogram of ore. And then we will let all of this burn down, open up the front door, and then try to extract our bloom. Did you break that brick on accident? It just, it just happened. You're too strong, Joe. I mean... I'm a beast. The bricks are sacrificial. So right now we have opened up the door, birthing chamber, what you will, 
We're letting it free tap, and in a few moments, we're gonna start uh, digging around to see if we can't find a bloom. We're at the moment of truth. I'm very excited. And then I get to sit down. It's gonna be great. I haven't sat down since we got here. Oh, okay. to all who wants to watch this, whatever the is gonna happen next, we're doing it. Conveniently, I think the bloom has migrated towards that opening. Yep, that's it. Is that between right where you're standing? So take a step back. Oh. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, baby. Ooh. <laughs> Alright, we've got two chunks. Oh, this is hot. Okay. Yeah, the amount of heat that comes up. Let's get some team. That's gonna break off. So if it get perfect. Adrian, Dylan, David. Adrian, Dylan, David. And I'm point. Adrian? Dylan? David? Perfect. Strike. 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 And pause. a success. We pulled iron. It's a little crumbly, which means it's a little high carbon. There's definitely some good mass there. I'm going to play with it now that I'm not feeling like I'm going to be lit on fire. Okay. Hey, it's arrived. It's still here. His nose is there. We did good. Good hammering, everyone. All of these are going to be pieces of iron. So right here is probably our single most consolidated chunk of bloom. If I'm going to hazard a guess. Hazard. Probably, I'm gonna go 10 pounds. Not bad. Is too high carbon bad for blade steel? It's an absolute bear to consolidate. So I may uh, actually decarburize this a bit. How do you do that? You bake it. Oh, that's very high carbon. Uh, it wasn't what I was shooting for, but it worked. So we did not make iron, we made steel. It'll be a lot harder to turn into a workable material afterwards, but it'll be a fun challenge, I think. So, honestly, successful. So at the end, we were able to produce a pretty large supply of steel out of this orange dirt. Thanks again to Good and Basic for sharing with me the location of this bog ore and for being willing to go on this really long hike with me. And thank you to Joe for his expertise in turning this dirt into steel. We're going to continue working with this piece of steel with Joe, fully work it into something a little bit more usable, which will likely involve turning it into iron and then potentially back into steel. Um, and I think this will be a good opportunity to do a, a bit of a deep dive where we explore the differences of some of the alloys of iron with steel and kind of explore reliable ways of turning one into the other so we can comfortably say we've moved on into the age of steel so be sure to subscribe for that thank you again to all of our supporters on patreon thanks for watching and uh one last thing catch me at vidcon where i'll be next week if you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics also if you've enjoyed these series consider supporting us on patreon we are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going thanks for watching